Good morning everyone, welcome to a natural guide on playing as SCP-173 in SCP Secret Lab. Not to be confused with How to Master 173, which is a short 1 minute and 44 second meme. In this video, we're going to analyze the strengths and weaknesses of SCP-173 and discovering what it truly is the best playstyle for this SCP. And if you're wondering why my voice sounds different than it usually does in videos, I honestly can't tell you. <laughs> maybe it's the weather, maybe it's the seasons, but I, I'm telling I hear my voice sounds different. It's not you going crazy, it's me. Whatever is going on, it's it's probably me, so don't worry about it, it's okay. Usually, this is the part where I say, now let's get right into it. But before that, I have to bring up something very important. My last video was the first time ever I told people to subscribe, and oh my god, you guys are amazing. You guys killed the subscribe button. I am just amazed over what you guys did that day. Just holy Thank you guys so much, seriously. I can't believe so many of you guys were so kind enough to hit subscribe, thank you. Sorry for taking time out of the video to just say thank you for the subscribers and stuff, but like that amazed me. I was I was just stunned by it, like wow. So again, if you guys wanna subscribe because you like my content or something like that, go for it. It's free, it's right there, and thank you so much. It really helps me out in everything that I do. I'm so thankful for it. Anyways, let's get right into the video. Starting off with strengths, Peanut has four major strengths. He has lots of health, he has lots of speed, he has chain kill potential, and he's also a combo master. And if you're thinking to yourself, what does combo master mean? We'll get to that shortly. <laughs> so let's begin with his health. Peanut is pretty much the tank of SCP Secret Lab. He has the most health out of every SCP in the game. SCP-173 has 3,200 health while the second highest health SCP is the dog at 2,200. And the next thing you're gonna ask me is, what about SCP-106? You know, the guy that has 650 health, but takes literally forever to kill? And you're absolutely right, SCP-173 is also a tank, but we'll get to that on a different video. <laughs> However, there are major differences between SCP-173 and SCP-106 when it comes to being a tank. You see, first of all, SCP-106 has a huge, huge damage resistance against bullets, while Peanut takes full damage from any gun that's shot against him, including the assault rifle, the pistol, and the logister. Whatever you use against him, he takes the normal amount of damage that every SCP in the game takes other than 106. 106 only takes about 1 to 3 damage per bullet when he has 650 HP. There's no exact percentage conversion, but I would say it's somewhere around 90 to 95 percent damage resistance when it comes to bullets. The reason I keep bringing up bullets is because SCP-106 takes full damage against the Micro, Grenades, and Tesla Gates. When you use grenades against SCP-173, it takes three full grenade shots to the feet in order to defeat him. SCP-106, however, if a single grenade catches him by the feet, just one grenade, it instantly kills him, without any doubt, without any chance of him surviving. Micros are the same thing. When a micro is used against SCP-173, it takes quite the long time for him to die to the micro, almost taking up the full charge of it. Because of its health, the micro takes a long time to kill him, which makes sense. 106 is the opposite. Because he only has 650 health, the micro is not bullet damage, it's some form of electricity. So when the micro is used against 106, it kills him in less than 3 seconds because his health is 650. And lastly, Tesla Gates. Tesla Gates is pretty much the same thing as the Micro. When Peanut gets caught in a Tesla Gate, he can survive one to four different shocks before he actually perishes and dies to the blast. This is a very important trait of his because if someone looks at him while he's in a Tesla Gate, he takes a lot of damage because he can't move away from it. However, because he can survive more than one shock, he has a chance of surviving. 106, however, just like we discussed before, dies in a single Tesla Gate blast. All it takes is for 106 to slip up one time and it's over. Which brings us back to the main point of Peanut being the tank of the team. While 106 and Peanut are both very powerful tanks in their own right, I personally believe Peanut is slightly better than Larry, mainly because he's better when it comes to things other than bullets. But in conclusion, Peanut is the tank of the game. He has the most health and overall usually takes the most bullets because when he's looked at, he doesn't move which is why he's usually the one to be shot at the most, which makes sense for him to have the most health. Now we move on to his speed. His speed is a very, very interesting factor about him. You see, there's more to SCP-173 other than the fact that, oh, he moves fast, he's a fast boy. Wrong. Not only is he technically the fastest SCP in the game, 
but his speed also increases as his health decreases. In other words, when Peanut's at full health, he's really fast, and when Peanut's at one health, he's a literal parkour speed demon. The first thing I want to bring up relating to this is my actual guide to 939, where I talked about how 939's advantage is also his speed. 173 is much faster than 939, but the reason he's not technically as fast as 939 is because when he's looked at, he just completely stops moving. We're going to talk more about this when we get to the weaknesses, so for now, let's just say when 173 is not being looked at, he's pretty fast. On the surface, I did a little bit of a speed test. I decided to time how fast is SCP-173 when he's at maximum health, medium health, and at low health. When he's on maximum health, it takes him a pretty, pretty good amount of time to get from A to B. When you cut his health in half, to be exact 1600, he gets there at a much quicker speed a much more noticeable speed compared to his normal HP amount. The reason for this, I don't know, but who cares? I think it's such a cool little effect, and I think it's pretty balanced too. Considering that Peanut is very limited when it comes to how far he can move, the more damage he takes, the farther he goes, I think is a pretty cool addition. And of course we have the very last thing. When Peanut is at 1 HP, it is just the fastest thing you will ever see. Of course this is rarely gonna happen in a game, where you get shot down all the way to like 1, 2, or maybe even like 20 to 100 HP, but if you ever get shot down to this low amount and survive, you will be the most powerful force in all of existence. However, keep in mind as soon as someone looks at you, all this speed gets cancelled out. You are not immortal, you're just super fast. So in conclusion, Peanut is the only SCP in a game that his speed changes as his health goes down. I recommend staying away from low HP, and you should really use this as a last resort option, but if your health gets low, just know that it's not the end of the world, and in the end, the more damage you take, the stronger you technically get. Next up, his chain kill potential. Now this is a very, very interesting one. You see, 173 does not have any kill cooldowns. He can instantly kill people no matter who they are, which means that if no one is facing your direction, you can instantly kill two people in less than like a second. This was actually one of the points I brought up in my How to Master 173 video, where I showed a line of MTF just running facing the wrong direction, and as Peanut, I just murdered all five of them at the same time. That's not a meme, that can actually happen. Again, it's hard. It's very difficult, but with enough skill and enough time and patience, you can probably pull it off really easily, especially if people are like not paying attention. But back to what we were talking about, if you compare this to the other SCPs such as 106, Plague Doctor, and Dog, when 106 kills someone, there's a cooldown that's shown as a tiny little circle on the front of your screen, and as soon as that runs out, you can kill the second person. As Plague Doctor, you have the same thing. You have a circle that loads around when you kill someone, and you can only kill the next person after that circle runs out. 939 is very different, but has the same thing. The bite cooldown is about one second long, I would say a little bit less than a second, but there is no circle. For 939 you don't see the cooldown, but there is a cooldown when it comes to biting people. Peanut and 96 are the two SCPs that don't have a kill cooldown when you attack someone. Like I said before, this is very important as you can sneak up on people from behind and get more than one kill in a single stretch. Of course it depends on the situation and what room you're in, but in general you will usually be able to kill more than one person if you sneak up on a group of people. This also works really well with his speed. And of course the best SCP to partner up with the chain kill is SCP-079 the computer, which is the next part of the list, he is a combo master. So why does Peanut have master next to the word? Every SCP has combos that he can do with other SCPs, but why does Peanut get combo master? Well you see, not only does Peanut have the most combos out of every SCP in the game, but he also is the easiest to combo with. The three SCPs that he combos best with are 939, 96, and Computer. Other SCPs in general, it's great for him to assist other SCPs. If anything, he should always be with another SCP as the tank, the one taking up all the bullets, and gathering all the attention. But if you truly want to combo some people to death, you want to stick around 96 and Computer, and mostly, sometimes, sometimes 939. Starting off with the most obvious one, the Computer, the computer has the ability to turn off the lights in any room, which makes it 10 times easier to attack and kill D-Class who are running away. Usually if a D-Class is backing up and running away from you, it's very difficult to catch up to him because he's looking at you the whole time. However, with computer, if he turns off the lights and closes all the doors on that human, you can easily take him out without wasting a single second. And the same thing goes for if he's running away. With computer on your side, even if a D-Class gets away from you, you can chase after him and the computer can lock down all the doors, turn off the lights, and you get an easy kill. 
This was another thing I brought up in my How to Master video, where I showed an example of when a computer turns off the lights, you can kill people in a very, very short amount of time. This can be countered, however, by a flashlight. Yep, just a simple flashlight. As soon as you kill the guy with a flashlight, it makes it so much easier to just murder everyone in the group. Depending on the server you play on, people have flashlights when they spawn in or when they don't, but in general, people don't always have a flashlight on them, but they might have one on their gun. So be careful, and remember, comboing with computer is very powerful and target the flashlight people. The second combo is with 9-6. This one is a very obvious combo. If you look at 9-6, he kills you. If you don't look at Peanut, he kills you. It's a combo that can rarely, if not ever, be stopped by anyone. Because if people look down when 9-6 shows up, Peanut can easily just clean up the people looking away. And if people are looking at Peanut when 9-6 shows up, then 9-6 just cleans up all the people. It's an extremely powerful combo that should be used at any time if possible. And finally, 9-9. through -9. Again, like I said before, every SCP has a good combo with 173 because he's a tank, he's got lots of health. But Dog is another one that I pointed out in a previous video because Peanut's very fast and Dog can see through walls. So when you go on surface and Dog can see where everyone is, Peanut can just speed his way down to wherever the MTF are located, kill him, and call it a day. And in general, because Dog and 173 have the fastest speeds, if the dog is looking around for D-Class while Peanut is following him, when they see Peanut show up, they're gonna have no choice but to run away. And when they start running, 9th and 9 can spot them and start killing them. So like I said before, Peanut has very powerful combo potential with every SCP, but the biggest ones are 9-6, Computer, and kinda, kinda dog. Kinda kind of dog. Alright, so those are all the strengths for SCP-173, and now we move on to the weaknesses. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is SCP-173's weaknesses only show up when he's being looked at. When Peanut is not being looked at, he has no weaknesses. There's not a single thing that Peanut has a weakness that every other SCP doesn't have. However, when he's looked at, all these weaknesses appear. His speed, his weakness to open areas and groups, he's easy to shoot, he's easy to trap, and you should really, really avoid elevators. Seriously, don't, don't, don't go in elevators. So starting off with his speed, like I said before, he's a very fast SCP, the fastest in the game. However, when he's being looked at, his speed completely comes to a halt. When he's being looked at, he can only move when the humans blink. Depending on your health, you can move much faster even if you're being looked at. Like mentioned before, you can move at a much farther distance at 1 HP compared to at full HP. But don't rely on this to help you out. You can't move, and that's a very major part of what the next week we're going to talk about is. In general, the best way to avoid this weakness is to try not to be looked at. And I know that's very difficult as the only way to kill people is for them to usually look at you, but if possible, hide around corners and take people by surprise or hide on the other side of a door like directly on the door. And another great way to counter this is by teaming up with another SCP. Because if you're partnering up with another SCP, that SCP can go and attack people while you can't move. Another challenge for him is his weakness against open areas and groups of MTF, or just humans in general. I don't think there's a single recorded case of a peanut standing near an MTF spawn and living to tell the tale. And this also corresponds with the next one, which is that he's easy to shoot. Because Peanut doesn't move, he's so easy to shoot and take down because he's not a moving target. 9 through 9, for example, when you're shooting at 9 through 9, it's quite difficult to shoot him. He's always moving around, he's spinning in circles and stuff like that, and in general, he moves pretty quick. Peanut, however, is a very tall SCP with a big head that is very easy to shoot because he doesn't move. The difference between shooting any SCP in a game and 173 is major. So the the best advice I can give you here is don't ever go on the surface unless it's like the very last MTF remaining, or if the nuke goes off and you really don't have a choice but to migrate to the surface. And to avoid being easy to shoot, get in tight corridors and get inside the facility. Do not leave the facility as peanut unless you're the very last SCP or something like that. But on the bright side, it's a good thing that you're easy to shoot because you are supposed to be the tank of the team. And the final weakness is that he's easy to trap and you should avoid elevators. This is kind of like a combo because trap Trapping him in elevator is a thing, so let's just go with easy to trap overall. Peanut is the easiest SCP to trap, and for obvious reason, because he doesn't move, like I said before. An SCP that can't move is obviously the easiest thing to trap in the world, as all it takes is one good juke and then you can close the door on him and you call it a day. This actually happens many times, not super commonly, but this does happen a lot. Usually in O12 room, where there's a D class where a scientist is getting chased by a peanut, he goes inside O12 room, 
he jumps outside and closes the door on him and he walks away. And elevators is also a very easy way to get trapped as 173. All it takes is for Peanut to go inside an elevator, you hit E on the button and he's trapped in there. This can be combined with throwing a grenade inside the elevator to do damage to Peanut as he's trapped inside. So what is the best way to avoid getting trapped? Well, don't go to rooms that can't be unlocked. There's many rooms in a facility that you can't open by yourself, such as the 96's room, 012 room, all three armories, intercom room, technically gates, and 106 containment. There's probably like one or two more that I missed, but in general, rooms with locks on it don't ever attack someone in there. The best thing to do if someone is hiding inside of a room like that or trying to trap you is just to wait for another SCP to help you out. Standing outside of the door that someone's trying to trap you in is the best way to keep keep that person inside of their own trap. And then you just wait for another SP to help you out, like a Larry or a 96, and there you go, you got yourself a dead human who just trapped himself in his own place. All right, so those are all the major weaknesses that 173 has. So let's get an overall summary of everything we just talked about. The strengths of 173 is that he's a tank and has lots of health, can survive multiple grenades and Tesla gate shots, as well as surviving a pretty long time with the micro. He's the fastest SCP in the game and can get even faster as his health goes lower. He has lots of chain kill potential if he's being secret and hidden, and this is usually seen when working with other SCPs such as Computer and 96, which he combos with perfectly. His weaknesses are that his speed can be completely cancelled out if someone's looking at him. He's extremely bad at attacking people in open areas or large groups of people as it's very difficult for him to move in large open areas. He's very easy to shoot in these large open areas and you should avoid going to them. And he's also very easy to trap, and the best way to avoid traps is by just not falling for them, knowing which rooms can be locked and which rooms can and just avoiding those rooms whenever possible. When you combine all this together, the best playstyle that I find for 173 is some kind of tank scout assist combination. He's obviously a tank because of his large health and should be used to soak up most of the damage that other SCPs might take. He's a scout when it comes to finding where other people are, just like the dog is. For example, when the warhead is going off, Peanut is usually the one that should go for the nuke, as he can quickly find it, go down the elevator, and turn it off. And of course, Peanut is definitely an assist player. Peanut should never be on his own, as he is extremely easy to avoid by himself, as all people have to do is look at him. Teaming with any SCP is highly recommended, if not a must. 173 is pretty weak on his own, but with other SCPs, he's extremely powerful. And that is a natural guide to playing as SCP-173. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said before, I plan on making a series of this, so don't worry, they're going nowhere. Thank you again for watching, I'm very thankful and grateful. Subscribe, and have an amazing day. Bye bye